Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today we're going to be looking at one of my all-time favorite leak code questions, leak code 752, open the lock. So you have a lock in front of you with four circular wheels. Each wheel has 10 slots, zero through to nine. The wheels can rotate freely and wrap around. For example, we can turn nine to zero and zero to nine. Each move consists of turning one wheel, one slot. The lock initially starts at zero, 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 zero. String representing the state of the four wheels. You're given a list of dead ends, meaning if the lock displays any of these codes, the wheels of the lock will stop turning and you will be unable to open it. So we need to make sure we never visit dead ends. Given a target representing the value of the wheels that will unlock the lock, return the minimum total number of turns required to open the lock or minus one. So there's definitely a lot to take in with this question, but for a visual representation, let's look at example one. So we have these dead ends. So essentially the combinations that we cannot visit and we have a target of 0202 and the output is an integer of six. And that's because we have this sequence of valid moves. So remember, we start off at zero, 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 zero. We're only allowed to turn one wheel, one slot at a time. So if we go from all zeros to the initial carrying one, then one, one, zero, zero, then one, two, zero, zero, one, two, zero, one, and so on until we reach our target, giving us the output, which is the steps within this sequence where we turn one wheel, one slot at a time until we reach our target. So how can we solve this? Well, let's look at the decision tree. At each step within our decision tree, starting from the initial position of zero, 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 we are going to have to computate all other possible combinations from this combination. And like it said, there is a wraparound effect. So we can go to one or we can go to the value of nine wrapping around from zero, right? So there are many possible solutions from zero, zero, zero. So I'm not going to add them all in here, but we're going to have all combinations of one. Then we're going to have nine, zero, 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 nine, zero, zero, and so on. And for each one of these combinations, we're also going to have to calculate their respective combinations, incrementing or subtracting one wheel, one slot. So seeing as we're looking at this level by level and we are looking for the shortest path, it makes intuitive sense to utilize breath for search. We're also going to need some kind of data structure where we can avoid dead ends. So let's consider using a set of the dead ends. So if we store all the values of dead ends within the set, this will give us a one lookup to see if the combination is a dead end. There's also another problem with this. Say we take 0009, this is going to wrap around again to give us a combination we've already computated the answers for. So this will create an infinite loop unless we track the combinations we visited. So for that, we can use something similar to the dead end set, but we're gonna use the visited set instead. And we're gonna add the combinations we visit to this set. Now with BFS, we utilize a queue. So first in, first out principles, and we can initialize our queue with the initial combination as well as a count. And this count here, we are just going to increment for every single combination we visit. So for this level, the count is gonna be one. For this level, the count is gonna be two and so on. And this value at the end is what we're gonna be returning when we find the potential solution. Otherwise, we're going to return minus one. So the hardest part, in my opinion, with this question is actually calculating all potential solutions from the current combination. So let's quickly look at how to do that before diving into the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the combination numbers, right? And these are string, remember? We're going to iterate through the string. We're obviously going to need to convert this to an integer. And then in order to have the wraparound effect, what we're going to do is for each of these values, we're going to add one. And then that combination, we're going to push into this answer array. And we're also going to add nine. And what add in nine does is essentially within the lock where you go up or down, it's going to go down in this case. So by adding nine here, we've basically wrapped around. But the problem then, what if we had one instead of zero there? We can easily add one to this, which will give us two. But if we add nine, this is going to give us the value of 10, where we have five integers within this combination where it's supposed to only be four. So that's the problem. And what we can simply do is use modulo. And we're going to modulo by 10. So if we add nine to the one, so it's going to be 10 modulo 10, this is going to give us zero again. So it's going to wrap around. And just like that, we have computated the correct combination. So when we've computated all the combinations for each combination, what we first need to do is check within visited set whether this combination already exists. If it does, then we're just gonna discard it and exclude it. If it doesn't, we're gonna add it to Q. And just like the FIFO principle states, it's gonna be first in, first out. So we're gonna shift off the Q, we're going to check the current combination we're on, whether that's equal to the target value, which in the first example is 0202. If it isn't, then we're going to calculate all the combinations again and rinse and repeat, making sure that every combination we check is not within the dead end or visited set. Now, that was a lot to take in. So let's dive into the code and walk through it step by step. And soon it'll make perfect sense. Okay, so here we are in the code editor. Let's start off by defining dead end set, which is our one lookup, pass in dead ends. Let's also initialize a visited set, which needs to be initially populated with the initial starting point. And then finally, we need to initialize a queue because we're using breath for searching. And we said within the queue, we need the initial starting point and we also need 
to add the count. Then we can start breath of search. So we'll q.length. Let's initially extract current and count by shifting off of q. Now in a real world situation, we won't want to be shifting off of q because this isn't now an operation. We'd probably use something like a linked list, which would have O1 operation to shift off the q. So at this point, we want to check if the current value that we've just shifted off of q is equal to target. Well, then we have found our answer. So we can just return the count. If however it doesn't, then we need to check if it's equal to a dead end. So we check in the set if current is present. If it is, we just continue, right? We exclude this. Now for the next part, we need to create all possible combinations where we move one wheel, one slot at a time. So for this, we're going to have a helper function. So const, let's call it possible combo. I'm going to pass in the string, which is going to be the combination. Now in terms of possible combinations, these are the possible combinations from the initial starting point. So let's declare an array to store all the combinations that we're going to generate. And we said that we'd loop through every value within the string's length, right? Now for the wraparound effect, we need to carry out two operations here. So firstly, we're going to slice from zero to i, where slice is non-inclusive. So it doesn't include the i value. We're then going to add string i plus one, and then we need to modulo it, like we said before, for that wraparound effect by 10. And we also need to convert this string value into an integer. So we can just add the unary plus operator here. Then we have to add the rest of the combination onto this string. So it's going to be string dot slice i plus one. Now don't forget to add the last brackets because we are going to be pushing this into ants. Now, if we just copy and paste this, we need to do this one more time, but instead of adding one here, what we're going to do is we're going to add nine. So this is essentially going backwards within the lock. Then finally, we can return ants. So this is how we're going to generate all the possible combinations. And personally, I feel like it's the hardest part of this question. And then we're going to loop through. So that combo of possible combination, and we need to pass in the current value. So initially it's set to zero, 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 zero. Initially for each of these combinations, we need to check whether it's present within our visited set. So it has combo. If it is present, we just ignore it. If it isn't, well, then we can add into visited that combo. And then we're going to push into Q the combo and count plus one. And that's essentially it. All we need to do is finally return minus one if no combinations are found. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Submit it. And there you go. Hope you found the video useful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.